Hello everyone and welcome to Wolfen Schafe podcast. My name is Magdalena and this is my little kitty co-host Domara. Meow. Uh, it's episode 17 already. Uh, it's um, Wednesday, May the 4th. May the 4th w- be with you. <laughs> and um, Yeah, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, dyeing yarn uh, in Switzerland, in a little town near Zurich. Um, I live here with my husband and a two-year-old son, Stasio. Uh, If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much that you're with me again. I'm very happy to have you here. And if you're new, uh, I hope you will enjoy and um, please feel at home. Um, so, uh, yes, you can find me on Ravelry. I'm Wolf Ufna there. And on, also on Instagram, I'm under my full name, Magdalena Wolf with double F. Um, we also have a Ravelry group. Uh, Wolf und Schafe podcast and we uh, have just uh, finished our first ever knit along. It was a Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones knit along and um, I already know who the winner is. So I will take you to uh, Magdalena from yesterday and yeah, just listen. Hello, dear viewers. Uh, you might be wondering why I'm in a kimono again. <laughs> well, today is my birthday, May the 3rd, and I'm going out to celebrate with my friends. And it so happens that my most fancy outfits are kimonos. So on such an occasion, I would, I thought, well, why not? <laughs> it's it's a good excuse to to wear something nice and um, also today uh, we will be drawing our uh, our uh, a prize for the song of ice and fire slash uh, game of thrones knit along i have the prize here uh, once again this is um wolf und schafe uh, hand dyed yarn uh, in Melisandre uh, colorway, um, superwash merino, cashmere, and nylon blend. Hmm. And I have um, I have this uh, cool looking Japanese box here, and I have the numbers of your posts from the uh, Ravelry uh, thread. But I wanted to announce something. Um, this was my first knit along and it was quite exciting even though it was a a small um, knit along but still i appreciate each and every one of you uh, of your like showing your projects and um, it was so uh, nice to follow your uh, your work and um, and i thought since um, there are only five participants it must be annoying if there is only one prize and uh, you have such big chance of getting it because I think it's different where there are, for example, a hundred people and you know that one of them will win. But if you're so close to winning and you get nothing, it might be quite frustrating. And I thought, because uh, I love you all, um, I thought that everyone who participated in my knit along will uh, get a 20% off coupon for Wolf und Schafe Etsy shop. So I will reach out to you and you will get the code that uh, you can use till the end of this year. So you have plenty of time uh, to use it and and yes, this is uh, how I want to um, say thank you for uh, taking part in my knit along. So now for the prize, I have here the uh, numbers from two to six, which are 
your uh, FOs in the thread. And now, there are the numbers, by the way. Yeah, you see them all. <laughs> and the winner is. Number six! Number six, and this means. Um, this means uh, Kana Winky. Congratulations, Kana Winky! You win this uh, lovely skein of Vulcan Chaka yarn, and your first name is Kate. So, Kate, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for you. I was very excited today about uh, drawing the prize. Um, so, yeah, this is it. Um, I have to go soon because uh, my birthday party will be starting. But uh, I just wanted to say thank you again to every one of you. And um, now go back to the present. <laughs> Bye. OK, we are back to present. Um, so as I said, congratulations again, Kanawinki, uh, Kate. Uh, I looked on your uh, Ravelry uh, page that you're from Australia, that's far away, wow, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just awesome, my yarn will go that far, um, and now I think uh, we can move to knitting, shall we? I have a finished object, yay! And it means it's a pair. So these are uh, the socks that I knitted for my grandma. And since, since my dad is here visiting, he can take them uh, to Poland to her and give them to her. As I said, it's um, toe up, um, sim simple sock with some interest added by um, four by four knit pearl uh, checkboard and I'm really happy how, how it turned out I added like uh, on the back I added only um, three rows of, of the pattern and I think it looks really cool uh, I made a fish lips kiss heel here and I I'm completely happy with it and some one by one twisted rib for the cuff and my, uh, the yarn I used was um, Cascade yarn sock in mustard colorway so they are they are pretty soft so I I hope that my grandma will be happy with them I will know as soon as she gets them probably hmm some tea Oh, today I'm drinking this. I bought this tea uh, while I was in Edinburgh. Oh, come on, camera. Focus. Focus. It just won't. Finally. So, I, I heard a lot about Puka tea. And this, this particular uh, flavor is okay, I guess. I bought it because I completely love green tea and I just wanted to have some tea to, like, to drink in the morning uh, when, when I was there in Edinburgh. And it has um, Sencha green tea, Otu green tea, Soy Gang green tea, and some matcha powder, um, which is 2% of, <laughs> of this tea, so not too much. Um, yeah, it's okay, but for me, a bit tasteless. Like, it, it lacks taste. So, well, okay, it's okay. Hmm, lovely. So, I have... Um, an almost finished object to show you. 
and it's my rum by cardigan. So I'm knitting the collar, the diamond pattern border of the whole cardigan. And um, in the end, because I, I mentioned last episode that my uh, Inter interchangeable knit pro um, symphony uh, the wooden needles they one of them uh, got broken somehow meaning um, on the join it well it wouldn't join properly so my stitches would fall off and I tried to um, solve the problem by uh, taping like with like scotch tape but then the stitches wouldn't move uh, freely, so it was not working. So in the end, I just waited for my father to arrive with my brand new carbons. Yay! These are my brand new carbons, interchangeable, uh, three millimeter needles. They even have. Yeah, it's written on them, but it will soon rub off, I suppose. Um, and they just work like a dream. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I don't have to fight with the needles anymore. It's just... Whew, <laughs> whew. So it's um, actually hard to show you the whole project because... Uh, yeah, because the whole border is on the needles right now. But yeah, here I have the sleeves, which are a bit longer than half sleeve. And the cute diamond uh, accent on the back. And yeah, and here I have really a lot, lot of stitches. And you can make out a bit of the patterning already. There, there will be diamonds here. So one row takes me quite a while to complete. Uh, but yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. And I'm very happy with how, um, how the contrasting color uh, works with, with the main color. I think they look great together. It will be a nice accent um, around the face, I think. Um, and so the gray yarn is Debbie Bliss uh, Cashmerino uh, in mist colorway. And this is uh, Gabriela Kos hand dyed yarn in Chinese ink colorway. And both are sport weight yarns. So they work uh, well together. Of course, I, <laughs> when I was knitting in the evening, I, I was just not uh, focused enough and I had to rip back uh, like half a row uh, because I messed up the pattern. But well, what can you do? It's not uh, mindless knitting, unfortunately. Uh, so that's how, to, and yeah, and I'm also happy that I decided not to squeeze any more from the leftover yarn that I had, because I had only this much after I finished the sleeves. Um, because it's taking quite a lot of the, the contrasting colors, so clearly I would not be able to finish uh, the cardigan with, with what I had with the main color <laughs> anyway. So yay, yay for me. <laughs> so I, uh, while not being able to work on uh, on this cardigan, I finished uh, uh, these socks, but I also did uh, just a couple of rows on my uh, Mira sweater. Yes, it's still on. It's not, I did not give up on it. It's just, uh, when I'm done with the Rombai cardigan, I will, I will have uh, time for, for, for my sweater because Rombai, Rombai is for my friend. And um, I also worked a bit on my cozy memories blanket. So I'm not showing you Mira because it's like it, almost nothing changed. So it's not really worth showing. And 
with my cozy memories blanket I have a little bit more last time I showed you I think these three squares and now I have this one and it's uh, it was very exciting for me to knit with it because it's my hand spun yarn I spun it on my spindle and then plied it on on my spinning spinning wheel and yeah this is very nice it's from a uh, woolly witch uh, Rolex uh, and I think yeah this is the first time I have ever knitted with my hand spun yarn so it was like yeah I have created this yarn how awesome and here I I will be completing a square from this yarn that I used for my mystery plus manners uh, gloves for these grandma socks and I still have just a little bit left over so yay this is my cozy memories blanket I'm still not finished with the first row but it's not a project that I will be hurrying to complete it just whenever I will get leftover yarn I will add something probably um, and I'm knitting on DPNs because it's pretty convenient it's um, three millimeter needles and these are knit pro zings and the camera won't focus okay okay now now camera please okay this is pointless you, you have to believe me these are three millimeters and uh, yeah they are quite nice they are light I would make the tips a little more uh, a little sharper but yeah, they're okay and they're not very expensive which is also a good um, thing and this is my hand spun yarn in a cake and I didn't expect it to be that much I knew it was around one ounce but but still now it, that's in a cake I can see it's quite a lot so yay this is this is quite exciting and probably next I will be adding some of this yarn uh, that I uh, knitted my um, last socks with because it's gorgeous it's A. Mary Knits Autumn Desert Flowers colorway hand dyed yarn and it's and it's less yellow on the can you hear that if you heard it uh, this was our neighbors uh, rolling up the the curtains <laughs> yeah we live in quite an old uh, building it's Switzerland so it's uh, perfectly preserved but still it's from 1960s so some things are um, yeah <laughs> different <laughs> Um, so yeah so this is my knitting this week and I dropped some yarn excuse me oh, oh yeah I have this much of of the mustard cascade yarns I th I'm not sure if it will be enough uh, to complete the square but I still have the other from the other sock I have this much so I think I will be fine mm. all right so next segment is spinning and with spinning I can show you a scary thing because uh, when I uh, when I first got my spinning wheel I wanted to practice before I use my fine fancy fibers I just wanted to practice on something less sophisticated and cheaper so I just used some samples of uh, various uh, Polish sheep uh, fibers and well Poland is not a very warm country well compared to um, worldwide um, 
So our sheep have quite rough uh, wool, and um, that's why the, the yarn I made is pretty scratchy. I wonder if you can see. Uh, yes. So inside of this ball, there are um, various others, other uh, fibers uh, in various colors, from cream to gray. Uh, I don't think I will be keeping this because it's like, I don't know. I, I have no idea what I could use this for, but uh, it's like uh, just uh, practice material and I practice Navajo ply. So uh, I Navajo applied this. It was very interesting. I'm not sure whether I I might have had too much of a twist because the the, the yarn was while plying it was twisting like crazy. So I don't know. <laughs> it worked. It it is yarn. It's plied. It's a three plied yarn. But yeah, it was a bit strange. Mm. So uh, I just kept this to show you. <laughs> uh, I have found some more of this beautiful Falkland. It's porpoise fur in a Caridwen colorway, and it's a bit bluer on the camera than it is in real life. It's in real life. It's a bit more muted. Oh, camera. Do me a favor. The camera is particularly nasty today, I say. <sighs> now? Now? Yay! Okay, now the colors are more true. So, yeah, this is my Falkland. Okay. Um, and it's uh, it's very nice to work with and I think I well I might not apply it because why not but I'm not sure yet what I will do so this is it and I have um, started another single and it's on my kiwi <laughs> So, for, for uh, double plying, I have started the other single, the colorful one. Sorry. Yeah, you can see it here. Uh, I think I will be pu putting it to my blanket because it's so beautiful and I don't have that much of it. So, so I won't be able to make anything bigger. But for the blanket, I think it will be great. So yay! Now this this is um, this is in Harry Potter inspired colorway. It's Fox the Phoenix, and I think it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Whew. So this is it for spinning. And now we have the dyeing segment. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the decoration you can see the, uh, there behind me, uh, these are uh, so-called Japanese uh, koinobori, which are uh, Japanese carps um, that are traditionally uh, used for decoration of the house in May. Uh, in the families that have boys. So, uh, <laughs> actually tomorrow is the, well, it used to be boys' day, now it's just uh, children's day, 5th of May. And, yeah, because I have a boy, I, I got this as a present from my Japanese friend. And during May, uh, I just have it in my house. The most traditional thing is to um, you um, put them outside so they are um, they have the, uh, their mouths open and they catch the wind and they are like they're uh, moving with the wind. But um, 
Yeah, mine is from linen, very fine, beautiful linen, and uh, it's just a smaller version for a European house, I suppose. Um, so yeah, dyeing. Uh, this week I mostly played with greens, and I fear how the camera will present them. Oh, it's not that bad, it's actually pretty accurate maybe a bit more blue than in reality. So this colorway is, uh, I called it uh, seaweed, because, yeah, <laughs> you can imagine why. And the other one has, uh, it's lighter, uh, lighter greens. Uh, and I, I like it very much. It has some, it has some teal speckles also and some olive greens and some more subtle teals and I call this a silent pond it just appeared in my head uh, as a name for for this colorway and these both are uh, fingering weight 100% uh, superwash BFL they look kind of nice together so this week was green <laughs> and uh, since yesterday was my birthday I treated myself to many things and there will be some more um, from me to myself presents uh, arriving uh, via mail so you will see them probably in the next episode and yeah, I will start. Oh, no, oh, no, it got stuck. Okay, so I have some favorite um, yarn stores and fiber stores in Poland. So I just used the opportunity of my dad coming here and, and I ordered and he brought my pre presents. Uh, so this is one of them. I bought a Nidi Nodi for uh, when I have uh, finished my yarn uh, I can put it on here to make it into a loop and also to count um, how many meters I have and it's, it's from Poland so it's oh come on so it's Kromski I told you before that I wanted a Kromsky spinning wheel, but they didn't sell them in Switzerland and importing a spinning wheel to Switzerland is, is a bad idea. So that's why I have my Kiwi and I'm in love uh, with my Kiwi, but, but still it's nice to have something from a famous Polish brand. So this is my Nidi Nadi and and now, um, this segment will be this time mostly for people from Poland because I don't expect other people to order from Polish fiber store, especially because uh, the page is in Polish, I think only. <laughs> but you can still uh, see what I bought. So, from, sorry for the crinkling, it's everything is crinkling from the store that I uh, got the Nidi Nodi. I also bought some fiber for spinning and because I liked my Falkland so much, I bought some undyed uh, 100 grams. And yeah, and this is uh, the address. It's Hobby Vełna, which translates to um, Hobby Wool. Uh, and it's a very nice shop, I recommend it if you live in Poland. Uh, so it's really nice and squishy. And I also, because you can order uh, really small amounts like 25 grams, my Falkland was 100 grams, I ordered um, 25 grams just to, out of curiosity, so I could try it out and see maybe I will want more. So this is, um, Southern, South German uh, fiber. It's 
a bit um, more creamy than the Falkland and another 25 grams of Korberger I think that's how you pronounce it and it's even more it has some it has some darker uh, fibers in it so it's it's like beige and I'm very curious how, how it will spin up I also treated myself to some 80 microns uh, merino which are dyed and I think they're really nice one is uh, darker and paler blues with with some yellow that looks like gold inside this one has moths, grays and pinks and this is mostly purples and pinks um, I think it will be a lot of fun and each of them is I think 50 grams if I'm correct so it's eight, 18 microns so it will be very squishy and soft and from another shop I got some more fiber I got for example this as you know uh, gratis and this is the name of the shop it's Evoenka which is um, E for you know like email stuff like that and Vewenka is uh, little wool <laughs> and this shop is also really nice and this is by the way this is the wraps per inch um, measure so when your yarn is done then you can uh, this is one inch measured and then you wrap it around and count the wraps and that's how you know what um, weight your yarn is very useful and this is just for free to my order thank you thank you Evelenka. and uh, all right so so I got for example <laughs> small Falkland it's also 100 grams and it's 20 microns and yeah because I have this much I, I could actually spin it together like ply it together and have a knit something out of it because it's 200 grams so it's it's probably totally enough I also um, ordered some merino superwash with nylon which means 100 grams which means I could try, try and spin yarn for, and then spin the yarn and then knit socks out of it because it's strengthened uh, by the nylon content. I think that's pretty awesome and <laughs> exciting too. Mm. I also got um, this is a mixture called. Um, what not polar fox um, well it's it's just um, 100 grams of a mixture of, of various uh, sheep uh, so that um, they make together this lovely uh, gray color so there are uh, white and cream and black uh, fibers together and they create uh, this uh, beautiful color and last but not least no <laughs> even not last uh, this is something very luxurious it's 100 grams of uh, blue face lester llama and mulberry silk when i i opened it and i was like Ooh. <laughs> my husband was uh, looking at me suspiciously when I was making these faces but it's just just amazing it's so soft <laughs> incredible incredible it will be very interesting to work with uh, all these different and high quality fibers so yes last 
is my 50 grams of camel. And this is incredible. This is just, this is just amazing. It's, it is just so soft. It makes you want to sigh. <sighs> <laughs> so I just ordered it because it's quite expensive. It's camel wool, so uh, camel fiber. So I just ordered 50 grams because I was curious. Uh, I heard so much about camel uh, fiber. So yes, I'm happy I did. It will be very interesting to spin with it. And the nice thing is that because most of these is uh, undyed fiber, um, it's not that expensive. So yay, I have treated myself to many things that didn't cost me that much <laughs> in the end. Uh, crinkle, crinkle. I wanted to show you some needles. Where are they? Okay, here. So, uh, from some other store, I ordered, well, I got these carbons that I already showed you that I'm using for um, the rhomboid cardigan. It's yes, Knit Pro carbons and the package is empty. I have also ordered these. These are at the Colibri. I like them. They're not very expensive and they are metal and they are light but not very slippery and they have two types of tips they have more spiky tips and more blunt tips and I of course prefer these so I bought these to work on my uh, knitted knockers because um, Knitting uh, with cotton on wooden needles was driving me crazy. So I just wanted something, well, better to work with. <laughs> and um, because I heard so much recently about cubics, I got myself uh, four millimeters. I think it's US six, US six size of cubics. And you can see it has square uh, cross section. And I'm really curious because, um, well, I use four millimeter needles pretty often and I fly on a plane pretty often. So I thought um, I will buy these to, to use on the plane because metal needles are not allowed. So. I, I could use them for for my plain knitting and yes oh just yesterday we bought tickets uh, for uh, I mean we I mean Gleb and me and we are flying to Japan in September for two weeks yeah I'm very excited uh, it so happens that um, there will be a programmers conference in the city where I lived for a year and it's not a large city like Tokyo or Osaka, it's Nara. Um, I mentioned Nara before I think uh, with, with the cup. Uh, so anyway, uh, the conference is there and uh, I thought it's it's totally a sign to us that it's it's uh, there and uh, so Gleb will attend the conference I will meet with my Japanese friends and then um, when the conference is uh, over we can go together sightseeing and it's gonna be awesome I think I'm really excited really happy about it and okay so I have last segment. I have already started this segment actually by talking to you about <laughs> our uh, trip uh, plans. So um, yeah, just what's going on with my life. I'm still enjoying Audible. I finished listening to Ian Rankin's uh, uh, Cross uh, and no. Knots and Crosses, yes, um, a mystery novel. Um, 
I think I won't be uh, buying next uh, next books in the series because it was very depressing. I mean, um, yes, it was just so gloomy and creepy that um, I didn't feel like uh, listening to more of this. Uh, even though um, the experience with listening to English with Scottish accent was very interesting. Um, so now I'm just chilling out listening to second uh, book of Harry Potter, meaning Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, read by Stephen Fry and it's, well, he's amazing. He's just amazing. It's a pleasure to listen to him. But other than that, I had uh, a birthday party yesterday. I just met with some friends uh, in a restaurant to celebrate together. And since I mentioned to the restaurant staff that it's my birthday today, I got a, um, a surprise with uh, ice cream with a candle. <laughs> <laughs> so it, and they sang to me happy birthday so it was very very nice and as you already know I dressed up in my kimono um, and I had a great time I got some lovely presents uh, I will show you one of them because it was a skein of yarn hello Hilary if you're watching thank you so much um, it's uh, sock yarn uh, Lana Grossa, uh, 100 grams, 420 meters. Um, it's 80% uh, virgin wool with 20% nylon. And I suppose it's, I suppose it's, yes, it's self-striping. So it might be good for some male socks, I suppose, because it's a bit, well, a more serious and muted colorway than I usually use for my socks. So it might be for my dad or for Gleb. We will see. And uh, yeah, uh, I had a great time. So I'm very grateful to everybody uh, who could come and make my birthday such a great day. So thank you very much. And I think um, this would be it for uh, for this week. Um, I wish you a great week. Um, I hope you will have better weather than we had recently. I'm not used to uh, having my, uh, on my like bad weather or on my birthday, and it rained yesterday. It was quite chilly. So what's going on? They say though that uh, that it's going to be much warmer and more sunny soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, happy knitting, and I will see you next time. Meow. Bye.